I'm going to ask a question that we all hate to get. Okay? I apologize in advance. <coughs> Please don't hurt me. <laughs> How would you define your band's musical style? Go! <laughs> Elevator pitch! Uh, go to shortfusemusic.com <laughs> and listen to it and figure it out for Sir, yourself. that's the best answer anybody's ever given to that question. <laughs> This video is brought to you by Potato Parcel. Yes, you heard that right. We'll hear more about them later. For now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the not-so-local music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and my guests today are actually two members of a six-piece melodic death metal band that's actually situated in the Bay Area. However, they live in the Vegas area. Uh, I met them at uh, the second day of Apocalypse in the Desert, which was a metal festival held at Backstage Bar and Billiards, or as the locals call it, Triple B. It was awesome. Their set was awesome. And I did a review actually talking about their set and everybody else's that day, uh, which you can check out. You know, go through my reviews. You'll see it. Uh, they were formed in 2004. They've performed in multiple countries. And their EP, Chapter 2, The Havoc, is out now. And however, I think at the time that this is being that you're watching this, we may even have um, a new song out which we're going to see a music video for, so stick around for that. Please welcome to the channel, Short Fuse. Say hi, guys. Hi, hi guys. Uh, woo! I should say one-third of Short Fuse. <laughs> yeah, we're still missing four of us. Mm. Two, two sixths? Huh. Welcome. Let me do it proper. Welcome to Room Cheers. 6. Ah, the room ching, 6. Ching, bing, bing. Ah. Room 6 whiskey, right in front of the microphone. Good job, Josh. <laughs> and before anything else, I have to say thank you, because they brought me some, some merch. I got the all-important beer koozie, short fuse, mauled by the beast. I have one of their CDs, The Force of Hate. How now is this like the first one you put out? 2014? 2014. The fourth one? Third fourth one. Fourth. Okay. Right on. And then they brought me the all-important merch bag. So to keep all your short fuse stuff in. Now I will throw the koozie in there, but I'm going to proudly display this boy during the interview, right? There. Yes. Okay. Yeet. All right, so, before anything else, uh, who came up with the name? Actually, it's, it's me and him together kind of came up with the name, and it was... Um, here in Vegas, uh, it, as a matter of fact. It fine. was here in Vegas. <laughs> uh, we came here, oh man, yeah, it was probably in 2004, mm -hmm. and we went to, you're probably familiar with the bar, the Double Down. Ah, uh, yes. Good old, it's a great it's a fucking punk bar. Yep. It's really, really cool. Try the toilet juice. Yeah, or I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Juice. 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 Yeah. But it comes in a toilet bowl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have one of those at my house still. I didn't pop for the toilet bowl. <laughs> I was, I, but I, I tasted it, and it was like, this does not taste like ass. This is really good. It was really delicious. Anyway, yeah. so ass juice, hold the ass. There was a show going on there, but we weren't there for the show. We just went there just to, you know, drink and do Vegas things. As you do. <clears throat> and the, the show was over with, so we ended up just kind of sitting on the stage grabbing a drink and... The band left their set list on the stage. <laughs> yeah, and we had, like, no idea. We were, like, thinking of a name for a really long time, and, like, we were looking at their set list. We saw Short Fuse on there. Which like, is by... Is that ACDC? No, that's... Is that Classic Metallica? Uh, I think it might be... What was it an original? Um, it, I think it was, like, some, like, local band from out I here. Know. I mean, they, something they, like that. They may well could have so covered you, a song. You don't even know where you got the name we from. Don't, we don't know what band it oh was. Oh, my God. But we saw the name, looked at each other, and uh, gave each other that special look. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it made sense when we said it. We On their set list, one of the song titles, it said Short Fuse. And we're like, wow, yeah, we got a lot of attitude. We get pissed off a lot. Great. This might be a cool name for the band. Short Fuse. Short Fuse. And we just kind of pondered on it. And then here we are. What, like, you know, 18 years later. Yep. Going strong. Uh, don't be afraid. We don't get that pissed off anymore. It's fine. I, <laughs> I could take you. I know where the knives are. So, um, I, I've been remiss, though. I forgot to say, if you don't know who Short Fuse is, thank you for watching. Appreciate that. But also, uh, introduce yourself. Tell them. Who you are and what you do in the band. Yeah, hi, I am Mike Death, and I do vocals for Short Fuse. Uh, I'm Martin, I'm the resident asshole for Short Fuse, and I do keyboards. Nice. So, <laughs> and I'm Josh, and I am the guy who screams into the void constantly, support local music, support local music. 
Um, your band mascot's still the uh, scorpion mouse? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, no, but it really should be. <laughs> um, Can we talk about the scorpion mouse? What, 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 what brought that on? Um, I uh, have literally no idea what you're talking about. Mm. <laughs> there was a post. Okay. One of you posted, somebody in the band posted about Scorpion Mouse. I forget what. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. I researched this stuff way ahead of time. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to have a Scorpion Mouse. We're going to name it Josh, and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> There's one of them other short fuses. Uh, yeah. Room 6 Rodent. Yeah. We got we got the name locked down by law, so nice. Yeah, we do. We got we got registered registered trademark on the name. So you have the short fuses. You're great. We love you. Oh, sure. Nice. <laughs> now I've got a question here that I think was for you because I thought it was just Mike coming. You're a multi instrumentalist in multiple acts. Is that right? Um, you were. It was yeah. Actually, I'd say uh, almost each member was doing other things. So uh, I'm on top of being a vocalist for Short Fuse, I used to do guitar and vocals for a gore grind band called Newt Dick. I uh, DJ under the name Mike Death. Yes, he does. <clears throat> um, and we, I got another, you know, me and him got a, a new project starting out that, you know, we'll be revealing pretty soon here. So you're also a multi, a multi instrumentalist? I sure am. Cool. What was your first instrument, both of you? Uh, well, my first instrument was keyboards. Um, actually, that's a really funny story because um, before I hooked up with this guy, um, I hadn't played any instruments before. And um, his uh, and our old band, uh, they approached me about uh, doing keyboards for them because I was like the computer guy. I was the computer nerd. And so they figured, you know, computers, keyboards, that works out. And I just learned how to play keyboards. And pretty much just about every instrument I've ever learned how to play was because someone asked me if I could do it. And then I just did it. <laughs> and now what instrument have you been playing recently? Uh, and now I'm a bass player for a band called System 6 out here in, in Vegas. There we go. And that's another project right there. And I, I started uh, playing guitar. I took guitar lessons for a year, maybe when I was like 15 or so. And I just took it from there. And I ended up being a drummer in a band of uh, guitar, vocals, um, just you know, I picked up on a lot of instruments just so, you know, so I can write my own music. And if everything sucks out there, write your own. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, before we get into anything else, I want to say thank you again for watching. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all the places I'm doing stuff and what I'm doing, and also ways to support the channel, such as my own website, which is room6.shop. I've got merch. Um, Patreon, where you can find patron-only content, and, you know, podcasts, other things I'm doing, and I got my own CDs, so what the heck. It all goes to help me make better videos, and also to help me support the scene with things like the Room 6 Rocks showcases where I put on shows featuring people who've been on the channel. Um, thanks. I wanted to talk, we, we talked about your, your first instrument, I want to talk earliest musical influence. And by this, is a question I ask of all my prey, uh, by this I mean... What is that first moment you remember saying, I want to do that? Oh, man, I'm thinking about uh, as far as like electronic music um, around the time that I joined this first band with Mike. Um, I was really into like industrial music, came FDM and Pig and stuff like that. And I wanted I wanted um, uh, uh, also um, like bands like Static X, Fear Factory, American Head Charge uh, that had like really cool sounds with their stuff. So I, I thought really like. I wanted symphonic sounds. I want um, weird little trippy sounds. I can make little samples and turn them into something. Um, I watch movies sometimes. I'm like, damn, that sounds like a cool sound for a for a song or whatever. Right. So um, yeah, I think uh, as far as me, like, uh, I listen to pretty much everything. So you know, uh, at the time, new metal and industrial were both huge influences for me. Yeah, I'm still a big fan of that stuff too. I love yeah. industrial. I love new metal. That, that stuff's awesome. For for me, when I when I was a kid growing up, uh, my parents had this jukebox and always play like you know like the golden oldies. Mm -hmm. So I grew up like with oldies playing, and eventually just went into other other bands like Led Zeppelin, uh, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith. And I was getting into, but the band that really hit it for me that made me want to do this was White Zombie. 
Not Rob Zombie, but no. White Zombie <laughs> for the old schoolers who don't know. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah. White Zombie. That was the first time I heard like metal or rock music with with samples, you know, weird sounds, uh, movie clips. Right. You know, I've never heard anything that like that before. That was Nine Inch Nails, right? Oh. White Zombie? Mm. I, I would say about the same time. Okay. Say, Maybe yeah, around yeah, the yeah. same time. Yeah. But... Yeah, that so after hearing that, you know, uh, was it Les Les Sex or Cito and Astro Creep Two Thousand? Those ones hearing all those samples and said just made the music creepy in a way like I've never heard before. Nice. And I was like that, and then that just sparked this darker thing I wanted to do with music. Right As a matter of fact, this album right here that we're displaying, um, we honored that by doing a cover of a Rob's uh, White Zombie song, Supercharger Heaven. That's true. Awesome. And one of the things I like b- about doing this show is that I ask that question and I hear acts that I've never heard of. And you rattled off a whole bunch that I've never heard of because I never really got into that scene much. Uh, White Zombie, I recognize. But now, it's it, it, as I'm, when I'm editing, I tend to like make a mental note. Okay, let's, let's investigate. Let's see if, if it you know jazzes me up a little bit, if it, if it does it for me. Um, and if you have something, whether it's an act or your own music or just a whiskey, what the hell? If you got something you think I should review, let me know in the comments. Because that's how I get a lot of my stuff is people reach out to me and say, hey, I got a thing, or hey, my brother's in a band, or whatever. Uh, cool. I wanted to ask a, a weird question. You like Taco Bell? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like Mortal Kombat? I wouldn't say like. I would say yes. um, obsess over. <laughs> okay. And, and, and we like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. So... What are your Taco Bell Mortal Kombat picks? As in, which Taco Bell items are going to fight and who's going to win? You know oh. what I really, really uh, frustrates me about Taco Bell is they'll create the best thing in the entire world and then it'll be gone. <laughs> they'll take it away. It'll be gone. It's like you got two I, weeks to get your hands on them like <laughs> na- the naked chicken it's like the chalupas it's, or whatever. It's, and then it's, gone. it's like the abusive girlfriend that you just have to keep going back to. <laughs> Because the sex is just so good. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I like the McRib. Anyway. So yeah, the, the Naked Chicken was one of my favorites. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to say is, each of you pick one Taco Bell item that you think would, would win in a Mortal Kombat uh, a battle. Um, I'm going to go with that Naked Chicken Chalupa. Uh, uh, first of all, I love things that are naked. Uh, you know, send me uh, you know comment down below. Your naked pics. Uh, <laughs> first of all, you can't do that. But anyway, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. He's got his own. I actually do that. W- when you introduced yourself, your social media handle went on screen. So <laughs> send it there. Okay, yeah. Send it to my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't need to see your fans naked pics. <laughs> um, naked chicken chalupa versus, uh, uh, you know, Sub-Zero. So like a frozen. No, 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 no. You pick one. Okay. So you pick one. So who do you think? What do you think is going to take the naked chicken tool? To- oh, I would I would say the uh, Mexican pizza. Mm. I was going to say Mexican pizza. <sighs> Man, my immediate thought goes to um, what's his name? Character hat throws the hat. It's got the brim. Yeah, Kung Lao. Kung Lao. <laughs> I can't want to say Liu Kang. I'm like, it ain't Liu Kang, and it's not Raiden. Liu Kang's homie. Right on. So future Josh, put up a graphic. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my weird, silly little question. But back to music. Actually, before that. I think it's time for a booze break and a message from future Josh. Booze break. A booze break. Booze break. (laughs) And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know what I love? Surprise gifts. You know what I really love? Gifts that are clever, unexpected, and most of all, edible. But what the heck? Let's throw someone's face on it while we're at it. Potato Parcel is a service that allows you to send anyone a personalized message on a potato. Thinking of sending a birthday? Congrats, get well soon card? This is a quirky and hilarious alternative to the traditional card. Your friends, family, and others will get a kick out of it. Just for watching this video, and for a limited time only, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your order by entering the coupon code TAKE10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Potato Parcel for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. We're back! Now then, we were talking among other things, about Taco Bell and Mortal Kombat. But we're also talking about earliest musical influence and your first instrument. I wanted to switch to present day here, or the recent past, and say, 
what is your favorite show memory as short fuse? Like some some show you played where things went really, really great. You checked off some rock star wish list things, or things went way off the rails, basis ended up in jail, what whatever it is, what is that memory that just sticks in your mind as something that you would be well, you would tell people if they, oh they asked what's the best thing about the I'll game? tell you one thing that comes to mind right away when you ask that mm-hmm. is that when we uh, played in Paris, France. Oh snap. <sighs> Man, it, we had such a horrible time there, and I got my laptop stolen I? off the tour bus. Yeah, Dick. fucking suck, man. Yeah. Um, but the show was insane. It was off the hook. Uh, fans were like up, up on stage, jumping off stage, diving, just going crazy. But like everything else about our visit there, like sucked. <laughs> and like I always, they always think, oh, anything happening on any tours or anything? I just think my my goddamn laptop, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like my laptop I, got I, stolen I, I off, used off to the ask, tour bus. I used to ask a question that I would ask that question. I say from the highs of like you know your your best thing ever to the lows of losing gear. You ever lose gear? And it got kind of depressing because <laughs> mostly because I I have I've left a guitar on the parking lot. Uh, ground at a Hooters. Casino. But the show was amazing. I <laughs> yeah. almost didn't even want to do the show. Remember, I was saying, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. dude, I'm so just, yeah. you know, upset about this. I'm like, I don't even want to fucking play. So it, it, it you, you brought the extra angst, and the crowd mm-hmm. did too. Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Those okay. Frenchies, man. They, yeah. they, they showed us. They, you, you show up in Paris. It's like, you know, it's a very tourist place, so you expect a lot of people to take advantage of tourists and stuff like that. But when you get down to like uh, the real people. And the the just just like the the guts of what's going on, uh, as opposed to just the surface level, you know, being in Paris, it's just it's night and day almost. Nice. <clears throat> How about you? Well, man, that's really hard. Like, like I think about like a lot of the festivals we've done. I think about a lot of the tours we've done. We just did a tour of Soulfly not too long ago. Mm. We did a couple of tours with uh, Six Feet Under out in Europe, and it's it's just so hard. Like. It's really, really hard to just pick one. I remember uh, one time, um, you know, kids don't do not do this at home. <laughs> um, I remember uh, down in uh, Santa Ana, we all took uh, some MDMA before the show. Oh, and... man. <laughs> that, was, that was Summer Slaughter. That was Summer Slaughter. That was the Summer Slaughter tour. You guys yeah. will probably know what the Summer Slaughter yeah. tour is. Uh, we had the best time. Um, I actually, that was one of the few times I brought out my guitar and like... You know, as a keyboardist, I'm kind of very stationary uh, to where I'm at. But I had my guitar and it was wireless, and I ran. Yes, he has. I ran up and down the stage, and I I was just like loving life. I was. Yeah, this this was at the Observatory in in Santa Ana, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now this wasn't your guys, but did you see that act at Apocalypse where the dude had like a keyboard that went like this? That was us. That was you. Yeah, that was him. Me. me. Yeah. Okay, hold up. I'm gonna put, put like comparison. <laughs> it, I was because I was wondering. I was like, is that him? Yeah, what, yeah. What the hell is that rig? So um, his uncle is actually a, a very, very accomplished builder and maker, and he. Um, uh, I had like uh, in our previous band, I basically just duct taped a, a, a keyboard stand together and I rock it around, but it wasn't anything special. So I'm like, I want something cool. I you know, kind of influenced by the uh, keyboardist for Marilyn Manson at the time who had his. Thing on a spring so he built it and uh, it was a prototype and he sent it and I was like I don't want anything else I want the prototype and I've had the same exact one ever since I have had to change change a little lazy Susan on it a couple times because I'm right kind of violent yeah um, I kept waiting for it to snap off the way you, you were uh, going for those angles yeah man. yeah yeah but the, the the biggest thing that I have to worry about is it coming back and hitting me in the nuts I was just gonna say <laughs> how's the spring how's the, the re- springs back how's the retention on that yeah. and also sometimes a problem when we're traveling like overseas to Germany or somewhere oh. and, he's, and he's bringing his keyboard saying but it's just bars and springs Inside this case, uh, yeah. it looks like the makings of a bomb or something. Um, actually, so, like, <laughs> funny story, uh, both Scott Chavez and I both got taken aside by the, um, I think it was like the Turkish or the mm. uh, whatever airport we were at at the time. And they thought it was a bomb because I had to take it I apart. I mean, you have to admit, seeing it go through x-ray, it's not your usual luggage. <laughs> no, no. It's not skis. Yeah. It's not, you know. So eventually, like, we, we printed out a picture 
of him using the keyboard stand <laughs> at a show and put it in the in the luggage. So if they open it up, they can see like what it assembles right. to actually be. Maybe that'll help. You know, it's the it, it's the greatest spy cover ever. You're secretly <laughs> sneaking yeah, in yeah, sniper yeah. rifles. They won't see the actual bomb inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was you. I I. I Apologize that I didn't remember. No worries. But no also, worries. you were dressed a little different. So, um, cool. A couple more questions, and then we're gonna see that video from them. Uh, what's the name of that song? Violent Riot. <laughs> Violent Riot. It's a, it's a, it's a nice little uh, love story, love song. Yeah, and it came out on Fourth of July. How how fitting. Hey, um, I wanted to know because you. You have to travel up to the Bay Area to rehearse, right? Uh, me and him do, yes. Yeah. Right. And uh, how often is, is that? Is that like right before a show or it's, a tour? Yeah. Yeah. Before, like maybe a week before the show, a couple shows or a tour I mean, or right? whatever At this we're point, doing. you guys all know the songs. and, and It's in our DNA It's like point, a, it's for basically, sure. You're basically a cover band of yourself. So. <laughs> I forget so much stuff, but I'll still remember the lyrics to Fuck the World from, you know, 18 years ago. The nice thing about singing your own music, though, is you can say, oh, I just decided to change that part. <laughs> Artistic license. But what I wanted to know was, what do you, do you ever perform in the Bay Area? Or is that just kind yeah. of the rehearsal staging ground area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We perform in the Bay Area all the time, actually. Um, we have one of, like, the longest uh, running Bay Area Metal Fest, Mother's Day Metal Fest, that... Oh, okay. Uh, Mike started. Um, we uh, went for 11 years. 11, 11 years, years yeah. straight. Wow. Yeah. So have you ever heard of the Mother's Day? I have. Fest? I, I actually used to work in Soma. Yeah. I, I okay. To, I used to live in the Bay Area. But okay. I, that, I, that, that, that was us. And, yeah. and now I kind of retired that. And we started up a new fest, uh, more of a, a Halloween-themed mm. one called Fright Bash. And that's oh, nice. coming up this October in the Bay Area. Nice. If you're in the Bay Area, check it out. Um Incidentally, I'm going to be putting links to all their social media down in the description. So that's where you can also find out what they're up to, where they're playing, and where they're going, and, and stuff like that there. Um, but the reason I asked is, like I said, I used to live in the Bay Area. I actually moved here from Walnut Creek. I met my wife in Davis. and uh, Walnut that? Creek, that, that's close. We rehearsed in yeah. Fremont. Hey! That's where our studio is. We recorded in Concord. And nice. we recorded our, almost all of our stuff in Concord. Well, I tried to studio. I used to um, I used to commute to I went, you know, commute of course because that's what you do when you live there. Yeah. I used to commute to uh, the Bay Area, but did you either of you live in the Bay Area at any time? No, yeah, we lived uh, so okay most so of our lives. Yeah. Why? What prompted the move to Vegas? And did you move? Like you moved, but the band was already a thing. Yeah. So what prompted you to move here while your band is still there? So uh, we've been doing this. Uh, Mike and I especially have been doing this since like 1999. Short Fuse started in about 2004. Yeah, we've been playing in bands together for you know since the late 90s. Um, kind of... I think you know uh, COVID hit and things got weird and <laughs> to say the least, end of the world, uh, end of the world. <laughs> um, I was ready for a change. I've been ready for a change. Since like 2015 or so, I've been ready for something different. Uh, Mike was ready for something different. Yeah, it just wasn't the same Bay Area anymore. No, um, everything is getting torn down, and huge apartment complexes are getting <laughs> so, put up. So you came to, you know, Ve you came to Vegas, where that's our national, that's our state pastime is tearing down casinos. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why I like it out here in Vegas is because outside you can go like 15 minutes away from Vegas, and then you're out in the, in the hills. Yeah, in the mountains. Um, I felt the same way about San Diego. Fifteen minutes, you're in a different climate. Fifteen minutes away from San Francisco, you're in pretty much in the same thing. But it's <laughs> Oakland or San Jose or Sacramento. You're in or Emeryville. Just, you, there, there, there's no like getting out unless right. you go like really far. And everything was so cluttered, and there's so many people, and and, and they're you know um, they're charging the freeways now. They had those are new. Or it like cost to go in the carpooling. Cost stuff. so much and money. Just it's to so exist. expensive. It's yeah. just everything just inflated there. And it's not the same that we grew up loving anymore. Right. And we knew every time, I know at least for me, every time I came to Vegas, I always had a great time. And I was like, oh, the best shows, the best festivals, the best concerts, the best conventions, the best, you know, all come through Vegas. Yep. And like, that's what I want to do. So moved out here and I'm like, man, love, it's like two years in, I'm loving it so far. I was just going to ask how long has it been? So you, gave, you, you, you came out here basically during quarantine. Yeah, uh, it was towards like, the end. Towards the yeah, end. Like okay. the end, yeah. So you were here when live music suddenly was a thing again. Yeah, we yeah. you went to one of the first like wrestling shows that were like back in live. It was like SummerSlam or right on or whatever. Yeah. Oh right, that's yeah. right. Because yeah. I remember, I don't know what it was like in San Francisco, but I remember 
Triple B, I would think it was the second or third live music show that was happening again, where everybody had masks on, but we were like, live music! And it was packed, it didn't matter what you played, it didn't matter yeah, what was Yeah, everyone wanted the back. music back. You yeah. could have gone up there and just played a ukulele in the middle of a metal show, and everybody would have lost their minds, because they're like, the, yes, this is awesome. And people were like, you know, people were six feet, no, 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 I'm hugging you and stuff. <laughs> I got a mask on, I'm vaccinated. But I... I was I was here and I was starting to do the YouTube thing and starting to get exposed to kind of the the, the scene both heavy metal and punk and, and other scenes here and there before quarantine there was unfortunately a lot of that metal and hard rock uh, uh, clickiness mm. it was definitely a little bit of that and after quarantine there was this release of no we don't care fuck you you know we are going to have a, a, we're going to have an acoustic guy open up for a pop punk trio, and then we're gonna have um, a, a glam metal band, and then the headliner is gonna be like you know outlaw country. It, it, it didn't matter. Yeah. And more importantly, people are going and supporting. Right, right. Because yeah. they realize it's, it's a it's a music show. It's not a right. metal show or a right. right. It's, I think it's a I think, music show. I think like uh, you know for for a lot of people, um, if you're fortunate enough, you took that opportunity during quarantine to. To bring your your community together and bring the people who are the closest to you together. Like I remember, like before quarantine, I I traveled a lot and I had like a really really big circle. I felt really really good when I had a smaller circle and everyone was just really close and just supporting each other and loving each other and and getting each other through this hard time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Last question. You made it. Hey. If you're OG Room Sixers, you know what's coming. This is another question I ask about my prey. Um, actually, I lied. Before that, I'm going to ask a question that we all hate to get. Okay? I apologize in advance. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> How would you define your band's musical style? Go! <laughs> Elevator pitch! Uh, go to shortfusemusic.com <laughs> and listen to it and figure it out for Sir, yourself. that's the best answer anybody's ever given to that question. <laughs> Just hit play. You'll Just hit it. play. No, seriously. If, if you you know you have you have a uh, thirty seconds in an elevator to, to describe your music. I feel like we've got a lot of uh, if, if if you if you take new metal and then push it towards melodic death metal with uh, industrial and keyboard influence, you'll probably have short fuse. Yeah, um, I mean that you literally described everything on your on the stage when you play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we got a keyboardist and a couple of guitar players. Yep. We're, uh -huh. we're a groovy ass heavy metal band with with a lot of synth and electronics. Now he's it. bringing groovy into it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, there's definitely um not a lot of degent in your music. No. So not too much of the chug. We we, we weren't um you know, that was an influence for us. That's right. newer. You know what I I love a good like chugging breakdown. In a song, you're not expecting it. Like a band that's doing more like 80s or 90s rock. Yeah. Not even metal, but just rock. And suddenly it's just like, dun, dun, dun. You're like, mm. you get that stank bass. See, we're, see, we're like, we're like, you know, mid to late 80s up to the late 90s influence. So, Gen and like Deathcore and all that stuff. Right. That's like newer to us. Like, we were listening to the bands like Sepultura. And Pantera and mm. Slayer and Marilyn Fear Factory, Manson, and Iron Maiden, Fear Factory. Like, yeah, very, very broad gamut, and, and largely due to you. But your sound is unique, and yet at the same time full of um, elements that like you. Everybody can latch on to something. Yeah, you know. But at the same time, you're like, I've never seen you. Or I've never seen you know this kind of arrangement or heard this. So um, it works really well. But that's that's the question that you know we all hate to get. We all, uh, everyone in the band seems to have like a very, very like, uh, you know, everyone's got their own different uh, thing that they bring into it, but we all just seem to make it like cohesive. And, we're all on know, the same page. We're on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all bring our influence. We got some like older guys in the band really into Iron Maiden, ACDC kind of stuff like that. We were Fear Factory, Slipknot, and, and Corn. Yeah, our drummer super punk rock. I mean, he was a punk rock drummer all his life until he tried out for us, and then we were the first metal band. So I'm amazed how many metal or really, really hard rock bands have kind of come through here where the drummer was like, oh, I, I grew up playing punk. Yeah. And eventually, you know, you 
you want to try something different. Yeah. yeah. And he also learned a little bit of jazz, too. So it's like, <laughs> punk and jazz. Left, left hand. <laughs> right on. And we're like, can you do blast beats? <laughs> can you do 16th note triplets? I can do 16th like, sure I can. Yeah, no, sure. but I can do 64ths yeah. on, the, on the ride. <laughs> <laughs> so, last question. Now you made it. Yay. Don't forget, stick around. We're going to be seeing uh, the song... Violent Riot! Violent Riot? Oh, I gotta say it like that. Sorry. Violent Riot? Violent We're gonna Riot. see the music video for Violent Riot. Definitely leave a comment down below on what you thought about the music video. Now then. We're gonna circle back to that earliest musical influence question. Okay? Let's pretend we're talking to little you. Really, what this hey is. Hey there, it? little guy. How are you, you doing? <laughs> I thought you were talking to your t- <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hey, so, guy. Hey, how are you doing? So, I'm fine, thank you. So, anywho, let's, really what this is, is let's talk to new musicians. The ones who come up and say, how do I be like you? So, um, going back to that moment where you said, I want to do that. What is one thing you wish you could tell you to expect going down this twisted road that is playing music? Teach the children's. Um, I just feel like I feel like what's really really important uh, is to really just be yourself. Um, there's a lot of different bands. There's like everyone's a musician. We all have access to easy ways to record, easy ways to promote, all that stuff. Everyone's doing it. The only thing that you have as a, a musician is your own personality and your own uniqueness. There's no other Martin. There's no other Mike. There's no other you. So just be yourself and just do it because you love it, not because you want to be a rock star or, yeah. or get blowjobs. We, we, I did it because I want blowjobs. So it reminds <laughs> me of a joke. <laughs> we, we don't want to be, you know, the next Slipknot. We want to be the first short fuse. And that's the mentality you got to have. Don't try to be something just because you like it. Come do it comes natural and stick with it, and, and you know, do it. Do it makes you happy. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's you versus you. It's it's you versus who you were yesterday. Did you progress, or did you solidify what you've been working on, or did you reinforce, you know, this thing you've been uh, playing for the last yeah. ten years? Oh, and there's been times, you know, like we were like maybe want to try to write more brutal yeah. or try to do this, and sometimes it just doesn't sound. Natural, it, it, it just feels forced, and yeah, just because you want to do it, you know, yeah. And then, like, when we just start just being ourselves, like, that's when we come up with the best music and it separates you from everybody else, yeah. I've, I've gone down that road too, where you f- you're like, yeah, this will be popular or this will be, you know, a new thing, and you, you listen to yourself, and you're like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> this is not who you are. It's cool to like branch out a little bit, but don't forget where you don't forget where you come from. So the joke. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. let's hear it. Send you out on a, di- on a joke. It's not a dad joke. It's, it's an old joke. Feel free to stop me if you heard this one. The band's playing packed club. Okay. They are finally headlining. There's music. There's record execs in the back. Okay, back when that was like, something to you know go for. Um, <laughs> and and they're like, it's packed. They're rocking the joint. People are losing their minds. They're gonna get signed for sure. This is there's their, this is their big break. And the singer's thinking, this is awesome. I'm going to do all the drugs. I'm going to sleep with all the women. And the guitarist is thinking, this is great. I'm going to buy all the guitars and I'm going to be a guitar god and put on workshops. And the uh, drummer is going, this is awesome. I'm going to buy all my ge- all the gear I want. Oh, I'm going to buy a drum set for Sundays. I'm going to buy I'm going to buy all the gear. And the bass player is going, G, A, G, C, G. <laughs> bass player. That's the one you want to go after. Um, Shout out to you, Jim. <laughs> So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Stick around. We're going to see Violent. Hey. Violent Riot. Violent Riot. Thank you for having us. I was going for... Oh. Violent Riot. Oh, Violent Riot. Wait, 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 wait. We're, not there we're not there yet. We're not, not there yet. We're not there yet. Stick around for Violent Riot. And um, I'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up. Uh, remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. This is an emergency alert. Inbound nuclear missiles have been detected. The number of casualties and the extent of the damage are not yet known. You have approximately four minutes to find shelter.
I want to thank Short Fuse for dropping by. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. Definitely check out the links down in the description so you can follow them and find out where they are playing, what they're up to. They actually do put on a killer show. Uh, other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, please click over there. It really does make a difference. Ring the bell. You know the drill. And if you want to hear my own music, which is not like theirs at all, please click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. One more time. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-bum. Ba-da-ba-da-bum.